praising God as a house of worship for over 130 years. That's how long one Pittsburgh church has kept its doors open for. And you know what's amazing? We got two homegrown pastors in here, a true modern day Mo uh, Moses and Joshua, pastors Rock Dilliman and Alan Hanna. They're with us to share how their church has been able to thrive even in the midst of hard times over those 130 years. Yeah, I can't even imagine all they've seen and done. And do you ever feel burned out by the hustle and bustle of life? I know sometimes we all can. Ask Amy this week is has some essential advice to help you get rejuvenated. Let's go. Until Scripted Faith starts right now. Here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, it's going to be exciting today. You know, truly this is a Moses and Joshua yeah. type uh, conversation we're going to have in the 21st century. Yeah, I'm excited. 130 years, that's legacy. They only look a bit over 60. No, that's <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, Allegheny Center Alliance Church in Pittsburgh is celebrating 130 years and they continue to be on fire for the Lord. A big part of that is due to our next guest, Pastor Rock Dilliman, who joins us now. Pastor Rock, thank you for being with us on Unscripted Faith. Thanks for having me here. Yes. Pastor Rock, I'm I, you know, I, we have a lot of guests come on, but you smooth, man. I yes, mean, he, he got the, is He got the smooth. arm up. I yeah. mean, looking good. <laughs> Jacket styling. I mean, you're doing it well, sir. It's called retirement chic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of that, let's get into that. Yeah. Retirement. I mean, you mm -hmm. were there 36 years, built a phenomenal ministry by the grace of God. Uh, how does retirement treat you? What you doing nowadays? Well, uh, my wife and I are still raising two grandchildren. Our daughter died eight years ago, and those two children are type 1 diabetics, so there's a lot of extra responsibility that goes with that. And uh, my wife and I, it seems like every day there's something to do, ministries to be involved in, things to take care of. You know, the traditional mantra from retired people is, how did I do all this when I was working? And that's literally been our experience. So retirement has been good. Have no doubts it was the Lord's timing and I'm enjoying this new season of life. You know, I'm thinking about it a little bit. You know, you said your daughter passed about eight years ago, so that had uh -huh. been 2017, and that was just a couple of years before you were getting ready to transition your ministry Not to too the. Long. Right. So, I mean, how was all of that through that process? Yeah. Well, it was challenging. Yeah. Uh, but the Lord is good, and uh, the day my daughter died, uh, she was in the hospital, and we got one of those calls you need to come immediately, but no further details. And the Lord gave me a clear word of knowledge. He said, Shannon's gone. Wow. Uh, he said, but she got things right with me, but I'm taking her before she can fall back again. Because our daughter was uh, involved in some drug usage. Okay. And uh, so we're part of a large growing segment of the American population grandparents raising grandchildren yes. because of drug deaths. Uh, it didn't kill her, she died of a blood clot, but the drug use exacerbated things and she wasn't caring for herself properly. Mm -hmm. So the, the Lord gave me a clear word, she's gone, but she got right and the Lord affirmed that two different women from the church visited her the day before she died, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to one another and both had the same testimony. They said Shannon was glowing. She said she had wow. really gotten right with Jesus. That's mm. so awesome. But the Lord said she's too weak to sustain. Wow. And I'm gonna take her so that she can't fall back. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we got there and indeed the Lord had taken her. His grace and his mercy is exceeding. I mean, you think yeah. about that, just to have those testimonies, even in her passing. Let me ask you, Pastor Rock, that is deeply difficult for a parent to lose their child. Oh, it, it shouldn't be. It's we know the out this. of order death is That's what they That's exactly call it. right. Yeah. How did you navigate that while still yeah. sustaining a phenomenal ministry? That's unique. What, how, did that, how did you do that? Well, the old adage where God guides, he provides. Uh, 
the church gave us, <clears throat> pardon my voice, the church gave us uh, some time, uh, but I really, I didn't need a lot of time. I think I stepped out for a month or less. Wow. Uh, because again, I had that word from the Lord. Yes. And if you've got somebody in drug use, mm -hmm. that's like hell on the installment plan. Mm. Yeah. That's and I had had 10 years wow. of sleepless nights, wow. wrecked automobiles, disappearing money, all of the usual storyline. And the Lord had sustained me through that. So when our, our beloved daughter was gone and that mm -hmm. ended, it was almost like the stress of losing a child was mm -hmm. less than the stress reduction wow. of coming out of that kind of a season of life. Yes. Uh, but I've always just found the Lord able mm -hmm. And so he sustained my wife, Karen, and I, and after a few weeks, I was ready to get back into harness. The church would have given us more time, wow. but I was ready. Wow. Pastor Rock, did you battle at all? Uh, you know, 36 years, I mean, you're building this, you're one of the landmarks of ministry in uh, Pittsburgh. You're one of the most successful churches here and battle with the fact of, all right, I'm doing all this work for the Lord, touching so many people, but then having this in your backyard. Was, was there ever any difficulty with that? No, in terms of spiritually or questioning the Lord or yeah. whatever, no, no. I, I just knew pastoring doesn't give you a free pass through life. Amen. Wow, That's come true. on, come and, on. <laughs> and you can love the Lord and be serving, serving the Lord and still face all of the pain and garbage that everybody else deals with. Yes. Uh, I read recently that one of the fastest growing groups, if you will, in America is, again, grandparents yes. raising grandchildren because of drug deaths. Mm -hmm. And uh, God never owed us a smooth ride or an easy journey, but he did guarantee us he'd be with us every step of the way, and he was. Wow. Mm, did you... Uh, was that any catalyst when your daughter passed? Was that a catalyst to making the transition at all, taking on your grandchildren, or was that really more of a... No, I, when I looked into succession planning, I learned that it takes about two years to do it properly. So I knew that couldn't begin until I gave the church a retirement age. And I didn't want to be that guy that hung on and somebody asked to say, you know, <laughs> you're the President Biden, <laughs> the President Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and so I asked the Holy Spirit for an age. Lord, when should I retire? Because I felt like I could go another 10, 15 years. Everything was good. And the Lord gave me 72. Wow. And so when I hit 70, I told the church, we began the succession process. If I had retired at 71, my successor would not have been available. Wow. If I had retired at 73, he would not have been available. Mm. And he was the perfect Joshua to follow me, and things have gone beautifully, no hiccups whatsoever. So when the Lord gave me that date, my retirement became a proactive thing, not a reaction mm. to some life circumstance but wanting the best for the church moving forward. Because when you've been 36 years in a place, the last thing you want to do is retire and see a lot of that fruit lost. Right. Yeah. And my prayer was always that my successor would take the church to the next level because my mm -hmm. identity wasn't in my assignment, it was in the Lord. Come on. Uh, so God giving me a specific date or an age, and the way it worked out, yeah, my retirement had nothing to do with our daughter's death or raising grandchildren. The reality is raising, we got them at 10 and 12, and raising them through the teen years hopefully kept me more in touch with the culture yeah. Yeah. Yes. than right. if it had yes. just been Karen and I by ourselves. Now, 
keeping in touch with the culture through them rolling their eyes at <laughs> virtually <laughs> everything we say and everything we do, but yeah. reminding me you're going to have to work really hard to relate to these people. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing so far. Listen, we're going to bring on Pastor Allen here in just a minute. And we've got a lot more with Pastor Rock, and we're also going to be joined by Pastor, like I just mentioned. But before that, we've got a brand new Ask Amy and Trending Now with Anna Smith. All that and more coming up next on Unscripted Faith. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other, one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing, deepen your relationship with Him, and propel you forward. Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek Him anew, rest your mind in His counsel, and hear His wisdom for your next season. Even more, you'll witness His Word manifest in your life and return to His promises for you. Ask for Prophetic Reset when you give in support of Cornerstone Television today. Every gift helps us to spread the gospel through Christian programming. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Years ago, a village in Vietnam was known for its opium fields and drug addicts. Today, this same village is known for its beauty, tranquility, and testimonies of transformed lives. CBN talked with a pastor there who said his father was the first believer in the village. He said, when my father was elected to be chairman, the government gave him a radio to listen to and stay informed about his policies. The only problem was he didn't understand the Vietnamese language. So the only radio program that he could understand came from a broadcast ministry among our people. My father listened to the word of God every day. Eventually, our whole family received Jesus. Today, our village has been transformed. This one downtrodden village is now recognized as a top tourist destination in Southeast Asia. May this story encourage you today about the redemption plan of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though we were once dead in our sins, God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love for us, made us alive with Christ. It is only by his amazing grace that we have been saved. I'm Anna Schmidt, and this is Trending Now. I love how strategic God is from a man thinking he was gonna learn about policy, instead learning Pastor Jay about the Prince of Peace. Well, you know what? It's funny how God can step in and just turn things around. You know, you think you're going in one direction and going in another. And yep. who better than to illustrate that than yes. who's joining us here on the set? Pastor yes. Alan Hanna, uh, you had all sorts of plans mapped out and what you thought you were going to be doing. And then whoop, there it is. <laughs> God then there stepped in and did what he did. Huh? Yeah, that's it. Mic drop, right? Uh, so good to have you. Thank yeah. you for joining with us today. And uh, uh, we're so excited to have this conversation with you. We know that you are uh, now... Uh, he's Pastor Emeritus, and you're yeah. pastoring ACAC. And uh, tell us a little bit about, I don't know who wants to go first, who'd like to get in there. Right before the pandemic hits in 2020, uh, speaking that you guys are just celebrating September 130 years, let me first mention that. But right in 2020, the pandemic's getting ready to hit. You're getting ready to hand the microphone over to him. Take us through that process. There's a lot that happened, and then you decide to transition your church in that time. <laughs> take us through it. Yeah, take us through that. We want to know. Well, I would have never chosen that, <laughs> uh, including the fact that the farewell from a loving congregation to my wife and I was not really in person because we weren't able to hold services. Wow, that's right. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things they did is they stationed Karen and I in the parking lot and people drove by in their cars to extend their th thanks and their appreciation and their well wishes and so on. And, you know, um, to use a Greek word, that sort of sucked. I mean, <laughs> you know, because uh, of course, uh, I love years. those folks yeah, right. yeah. and uh, still do to this day. And for that to be your, your closing days, cars driving through and things of that nature, uh, never really had the chance to do a closing sermon on Sunday 
to people. Wow. So it wasn't ideal. And in addition to that, we had planned a new building. And it had been approved and a lot of the funding raised, but we couldn't start it. And so you normally don't step off when there's a major building program ahead. Mm -hmm. But that's what I had to do, and Alan had to inherit that. Mm -hmm. But the Lord showed me very clearly, uh, the Spirit said, you're stepping off. You don't need to check any boxes or do anything to add to your legacy, which mm -hmm. was never important to me anyhow. But, but Alan stepping in, for him mm -hmm. to lead this process will be good because it's going to give him a major marker of success and the Lord's anointing right out of the chute. Mm -hmm. And so looking back at it in hindsight, it, it couldn't have been scripted any better because he skillfully led the congregation through that. Mm -hmm. uh, the building was dedicated just a few months ago. Wow. And that gave him a major marker in his early days of leading the congregation. So the Lord always wow. knows what he's doing, even when it appears to us like, hmm, uh, that's not the best way of going about it. It, yes. it was the best way. Well, you know, you mentioned yeah. about 2020, just something kind of hit me. And I'm going to kind of direct this to you because I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, you said, I didn't have any idea that that was, that's not the way I would have done it. No. But yeah. I believe okay. that there was a transition in the earth during that time. Do you think that was kind of prophetic maybe for you guys to transition in that moment, coming into COVID, coming into the reset, as they call it? Did it does it feel kind of like, it, it, not only that, you had the building as well. Mm -hmm. So all this sure. new stuff and then the transition, the whole Finding Joshua campaign, do you feel that was a prophetic significance looking back and seeing all of that? No doubt. Uh, if you think about, I started January of 2020. I had never been a lead pastor following a man like Rock Dilliman, who'd been there for yes. 36 years, three months later, a global pandemic that we hadn't seen in generation. You had the murder of George, George Floyd that summer, mm -hmm. pastoring a church, it's a very diverse congregation, mm -hmm. followed by a divisive election in our country, all out of the gate. Wow. And, and I like to say, our church not only survived it, I believe we thrived Amen. in yeah. the midst of that. And yeah. so um, even my story leading up to ACAC calling me to be their next lead pastor. Uh, I call them divine detours. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was, there was a plan. There was a roadmap that I was going down. And next thing you know, road closed, God had another plan. And so I believe it was prophetic. And looking back, um, God just led us beautifully through that. So it wasn't easy for, for Let sure. Let me ask you, so you had mentioned even before that <clears throat> If it was a year earlier, you wouldn't have been available. A year later, when, mm -hmm. what were you doing? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and how did this come about? Like, how were you available? At yeah, the I was serving as an executive pastor and worship pastor at another church in the area mm -hmm. and was perfectly happy there, would, thought I would be there for quite some time. Um, the Lord shut that door, um, unbeknownst to me. And so there was about a two year journey. I didn't. I knew of Pastor Rock, I knew of ACAC, I never worshiped there, he and I had never met. Had no idea that my sudden exit, they were in the midst of a national search for a pastor. Here I am 21 miles away. They didn't know that either. No. Um, looking back, I see that two year period, it was a training ground. And that was, a, that was why, I call, that's why I call it a divine detour. The Lord was taking me down a path that unbeknownst to me was preparing me, I believe for 2020. And so, wow. yeah, there are so many divine appointments and things that happened. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely Tell amazing. Tell them what you had written in your prayer journal years earlier. <laughs> um, I love journaling in prayer. And um, I, I go back often, when I'm discouraged and read through those. And I mean, years and years ago, the um, Lord had put in my heart, pastoring a church in the city, pastoring a diverse congregation. I mean, years, I wasn't even living in Pittsburgh at that time. And so I had forgotten about that. And so uh, when I came to finally came to a place, uh, it was really a place of surrender where re God and I were wrestling because I thought I was going this direction and I couldn't understand why the rug was pulled out. Um, I just came to a place, okay, Lord, I want your best. And the minute that surrendered, 
ACAC opened up and then to look back at that prayer journal and go, wow, God answered that prayer. Uh, it, it truly is amazing. Well, you know, so, uh, we got about a minute left of this segment, but uh, I, I really like to throw this out because I, you know, we call it unscripted faith. Well, mm -hmm. this is kind of an unscripted way that we're going. Everything we've talked about with you, with your daughter, the transition, the yeah. pandemic, you, church things and things are going to go one way, go in a different direction, but God had a plan. Mm -hmm. Give us some thoughts on, you know, when life happens like that. I mean, because I bet there are a lot of people even watching right now mm -hmm. that are listening. I don't know. I just really sense this from the Lord that they're in a state. I thought this door was going to open. It doesn't, and it didn't happen. I thought yeah. this was going to work out and it didn't because whenever mm -hmm. God shuts a door, he always opens a window. Absolutely. Uh, my father taught me that well. Uh, he had an eighth grade education, but he knew how to follow the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I watched him in all of my growing up years, just wait upon God, wait for a specific instruction from the Holy Spirit and follow it. Mm -hmm. And every time things worked out beautifully. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, yeah, I, I did Bible college. I did three years of seminary, but my greatest learning and prep for ministry was a man with an eighth grade education who knew how to discern the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and always followed whether it appeared that was a wise path or not. Mm -hmm. And so I've simply followed that throughout ministry, seek the voice of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. discern it, even if it doesn't make sense in the natural, mm -hmm. follow it. And you'll always come out the other side and see God knew what he was doing. Isn't that amazing? God <laughs> knew what he was doing. <laughs> Even we know it can be unscripted to us, yes. but it's yeah. all in his script. And that's why we just have to walk yeah. by faith until we get there. We've got more coming up with Pastors Rock and Alan. So I want you to stay with us because they might know a thing or two about our next topic. <laughs> Here's this week's Ask Amy as she offers advice for anyone that's going through a season of feeling burned out. Let's take a look. You can live in the present or you can live in the future. You can live on purpose or you can wander through life haphazardly. You can embrace the promise of tomorrow or you can relent to anxiety about the unknown. You can live in burnout or you can be refreshed and renewed every day. And today that is the question. And I'm so passionate about this topic. What refires you when you're going through a season of burnout. Have you ever felt burnt out? Number one, you've got to realize that you are a human being, not just a human doing. Laundry, kids, marriage, work, school, hig. You're a human being, you have to be. Number two, today is a gift and you don't get a second chance at today so you have to embrace the day embrace the moment don't dread today love today and i'm going to give you a tip that one of my mentors gave me and it is an absolute game changer for your life do five things every day that bring you joy i'm actually outside right now doing one of the things that brings me joy i go outside i take a walk i like to feed the fish i like to take care of the dog i like to read a book i like to listen to audiobooks you have to know what fills your cup i have one scripture for you today and this scripture is a game changer if you'll get it matthew 11:28 says this and this is Jesus talking. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Jesus said, come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. Jesus said, I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, Jesus said, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Listen, guys, burnout is real. Life can be tough. We wear many hats. I encourage you today to recover your life, renew your energy, and restore your sanity. Walk with Him. Work with 
him. Get outside, smell the roses, smell the flowers. You had a lot of giving out to do, so you've got to daily get filled up. Accept this gift of refreshing or cling to the ashes of a burnt out life. I want God's best for you and I want you to live a life renewed and refreshed and revived so you won't burn out. That's Ask Amy. We'll see you next week. Write in with any questions you have. Come away and recover your life. I love that with Amy. And it reminds me, Pastor Allen and Pastor Rock, of how that entire community in Vietnam recovered their life by coming to Jesus. I had a blessed memory listening to that report because the Christian Missionary Alliance has had a long presence in Vietnam. And today is the largest evangelical body in Vietnam. Wow. But when I was a boy, we had eight missionaries martyred there. It was during the Tet Offensive. They were herded into a ravine and the Vietnamese threw grenades in and killed all of them. And the sons and daughters of some of those martyred missionaries would be uh, partners in ministry with me later. But all of that work, all of that loss of life has so paid off all across mm. Vietnam there are strong Alliance churches today. So when I hear about good things happening in Vietnam, reminds me some people paid the absolute highest price for that to happen. Well, you guys have been in ministry for 130 years and still making an impact. But I have a quick question uh, for you. We got about a minute or so left. Uh, when listening to Ask Amy, did you sense burnout and all of that right before? I mean, because you probably felt a little weary and discouraged and right when the door shut up for 21 <laughs> years and didn't know where you're going to go next. How did God spark that fire back in you to keep things moving? I really didn't. Um, I, I, I believe burnout has a lot to do with identity. And so, you know, one of the things I've learned from Pastor Rock and the reasons why I believe our succession went really well outside of the Lord blessing it is being lead pastor of ACAC is what I do, it's not who I am. Amen. And so when your identity is found in what you do, then the stress and the burden is on you. You're checking numbers, you're checking offering, all those yeah. things. Not that they're not important, but I don't carry that burden. God called me there, it's his church, it's not my church, it wasn't Rock's church. As long as I'm obedient to him, he'll carry it. Doesn't mean things don't get stressful, doesn't mean I don't get tired, but I don't get the level of burnout because my identity is not in what I do. Well, I have to say this, you know, you guys have done a phenomenal job in the transition. I could probably talk to you guys for another hour. I mean, it'd be Truly. great for us to be able to continue Truly. to keep chatting with you guys. Uh, but thank you for your years of service. Yes. Thank you for what you're doing. We wish you nothing but the best. And uh, thank you for coming by here on Unscripted yes. Faith and hanging out with us. Thank Thanks you. Right. Thanks for having us. Thank in you. closing thoughts from I mean, you, what do it's you just, got? It's beautiful to see how God is so strategic in weaving our stories together. You know, I think about even Pastor Rock laying down that, you know, I would want to finish. I'd want to see a building to completion, but that was actually something that was critical for his leadership, for Pastor Allen's leadership in the future, you know? And what's amazing in the midst of all of it, God worked the whole thing out. So listen, no matter where you are, just remember these words that whenever God shuts a door, he will always be there to open up a window. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.